The Attitude Era of World Wrestling Entertainment was a time when sports entertainment embraced a grittier, more contentious approach that encouraged more violence, obscenity, and sensuality. While WWF was in the thick of its illustrious Attitude Era from 1996 to 2002, there was never a greater time to be a pro wrestling fan. For this video, we've compiled some lists of the wildest moments of the Attitude Era in 2000. Without further delay, let's get started. We can still today go back and watch any episode, segment, or match from the Attitude Period and be reminded of why we are wrestling fans, since it was ranked as the fourth best thing of the 1990s. With a roster packed with legendary names such as Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, Mick Foley, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Kane, Kurt Angle, Big Show, Chris Jericho, Rikishi, Booker T, Edge, Christian, The Hardy Boys, The Dudley Boys, Trish Stratus, Lita, and more, WWE's Attitude Era was the most successful period in company history. You're fired. Is it Music. Very few wrestlers sat idle during this period, and almost every wrestler in the company was entangled in a storyline. At the time, the face of the company was Steve Austin, whose rival, The Rock, was right behind him, sharing those prestigious top spots on the roster. Although we do have a special fondness for the new generation era, it was crucial for the corporation to update its family-friendly image in order to remain relevant. It was fashionable to be a fan, and you could watch terrific wrestling programs on TV just about whenever you wanted. TV ratings were at an all-time high. Sit through one three-hour episode of Monday Night Raw, and you'll be longing for the old days. This era captures everything that I truly miss about wrestling. Proper storytelling, amazing in-ring work, varied match stipulations, and outrageous characters that definitely felt larger than life. These are not just storylines. These were epic sagas that were happening in wrestling, and never again did we feel the same with the media again. Shaming man is on Nitro! What in the hell is he doing? That's not enough. The matches in this era took risks. In the Attitude Era, WWE climbed back to the top of the wrestling world by taking chances. People got hit with chairs, set on fire, thrown off the tops of gigantic structures, and run over by cars on a weekly basis. All of these things kept my interest. And when you mix that up with a good story, you're presented with the most awesome moments in life. Sure, the Attitude Era ripped off Extreme Championship Wrestling's hardcore wrestling phenomenon, but the fact that this single era brought the highest ratings that the WWE has ever had should tell you about the success and reception it deserves. And to whom do we owe our gratitude for everything that the Attitude Period has provided for us? Nobody else but Vince McMahon. The best thing the man has ever done for the business and wrestling itself, despite the fact that he has made some of the most dubious judgments in the industry, was to initiate this trend. It's always worthwhile to revisit this era of wrestling, since it was so inventive, fascinating, and enjoyable. Fans of wrestling are still hoping for this age to return, but since WWE returned to the PG era, they are no longer interested in presenting compelling storylines and are instead overly focused on worthless in-ring work. As a result of seeing wrestling getting worse and worse, it makes going back to the Attitude Era a lot better than we remembered. And these are the 10 wrestlers that are responsible for making the Attitude Era so great. If you wanted to get a whiff of the essence of wrestling at this time, to feel its electricity, there exists a match that exemplifies everything that was the Attitude Era. The names Grandmaster Sexe and Scotty Tuhati don't particularly scream superstar when you hear them, do they? But back during the Attitude Era, and especially in 2000, the team of Too Cool were huge superstars. Fans were fervently supporting everyone at the time but these performers were drawing the biggest crowds outside of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. WWE wasn't yet utilizing the term cruiserweight. The villainous duo of Too Sexy Brian Christopher and Too Hot Scott Taylor was formed in 1998, but it wasn't until June 1999 that they started to become well-known. 
A storyline involving nepotism between Christopher and Jerry the King Lawler had been hinted at by WWE prior to their tag team match, it should be noted. And Flanagan's head just bounced off the, the floor like a basketball. In typical outrageous form, Too Cool started dancing their way to the ring and in the process, danced their way into the hearts of the WWE fans. What was it that actually gave their popularity a boost? becoming friends with Rikishi Fatu in an odd way. The Head Shrinkers and the Sultan were two gimmicks that Rikishi had used in the WWE, but Rikishi seemed to have the most appeal. Whether or not that is because he rubbed his behind in superstars' faces or not, one can only speculate. But the mean, tough someone who could dance was a wildly good fit for Too Cool, and they created magic together. All through 2000, the trio would dance together after their matches, and they'd convince Rikishi to do so with the yellow shades that, for some reason, transformed him. At the 2000 Royal Rumble, the three men had a moment where they were the only three in the match, and they decided to do their patented dance, much to the delight of Madison Square Garden. Get a shot of this! Look at these people! Of course, Rikishi then threw both Christopher and Taylor out. Too Cool defeated Edge and Christian to capture the tag team titles, and although Scotty would win belts with Rikishi in 2004, this would be Christopher and Scotty's only reign as a duo. Rikishi, father of the Usos, left the group in late 2000 after it was revealed that he had inexplicably run down Stone Cold Steve Austin a year earlier. If you've made it this far and have enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be entered into our monthly shoutout giveaway. Once you do it, comment I subbed down below. Without further ado, let's get to the most exciting moment. In March 2001, Scotty was written off TV with a broken ankle from Kurt Angle, but in reality, he had serious neck issues that would plague the rest of his career, and he needed surgery. Later that same year, Sex A was released from WWE after he was arrested for attempting to cross the Canada-United States border with illegal drugs in his possession. This was the beginning of issues that would hurt Christopher. That was pretty much it for Too Cool in the Attitude Era. Scotty would return to the company following neck surgery and eventually team up with Rikishi on SmackDown following the brand split. As mentioned earlier, they'd win the tag belts once. What do they currently do? Brian Christopher sadly took his own life in July 2018. After being stopped for drunk driving and then attempting to avoid capture, he hanged himself in his cell. Despite being only 46 years old, it is long thought that he had fought alcohol and drug addictions. Taylor reflected on his passing by saying, Brian and I were different individuals outside of the ring. We didn't go on any trips together, share a room, or actually hang out. But each time we passed that curtain, our combined power worked. Magic, which cannot be replaced. We were just too cool. BC, you will be missed. We were just very different people and we went our set. We didn't speak for five years. You know, it was sad, man. I knew uh, towards the end it was it was getting worse and worse. And uh... Taylor is a coach for WWE at the Performance Center and is credited with helping to shape many of the stars we know and love today. He came up with her finisher, The Woman's Right, according to Lacey Evans, who spoke with TalkSport. Rikishi is enjoying retirement and is a WWE Hall of Famer. He occasionally makes appearances on the independent circuit and supports the younger generation of Samoans coming into the business, like Jacob and Sefa Fatu. Be sure to watch the worst botches and mistakes in WrestleManias, and we will see you in the next video.